Being a high-end jujutsu sorcerer is quite the accomplishment given how often you have to handle grotesque horrors, all the while putting your life on the line to protect the world against rogue curses. But, with that in mind, those who obtain these high ranks are also considered to be extremely powerful and someone who you can look up to, be it those born with special gifts like Gojo and his six eyes, or those who had to work their way up the ranks through their actions alone, which in some ways can be seen as even more impressive in comparison. And this reigns true with the serious and somber selective segment slicing salary man sorcerer Kento Nanami. Hey y'all, uh, big guy, did you hear some noise in here? I was in the other room working out and it sounded like you were watching anime or something in here. Oh yeah, that was me. I was just finishing an intense session at King's Raid. King's Raid? Yeah, it's this cool mobile game with some pretty attractive character designs, specifically ones with fascinating 3D models, all with customizable costumes and accessories so that I can make my heroes look like whatever I want when I go on raids against large-scale world bosses or dragons to get a bunch of loot. That's, that's interesting, but nah, man, that's not me. I'm not into those gacha games. Like, I just want to get the guys that I want. Well, King's Raid's actually right for you then, as it doesn't have a gotcha system anymore. Now it's a 100% drop rate on those heroes that you want to recruit, and with 90 heroes in the game, there's definitely going to be somebody for you. Really? Yeah, you're just in luck. As of the new update, Claws, the hero from Chapter 10, is back. But now he's darkened and become Rebel Claws. Though, if you want to get him, you'll have to get to his dungeon soon, or else you're going to miss out on all the great rewards. That sounds fun, I'll definitely check it out, but... I was kind of hoping for, like, an anime, you know, like, you know, so I could watch something while working out. Well, that's good for you, because King's Raid has actually got you covered in that regard, too, as they're releasing an official King's Raid anime, the successor of Wills, which is a storyline that originates from the mobile game, but taken from an isekai perspective. We also get to see the young Kessel gather together his band of adventurers and go out to find the Holy Sword that allow him to defeat the new demon that arose since King Kyle slayed the last demon lord. It's actually pretty hype, and it's getting released globally through Funimation. Aw oh, hell yeah, that does sound awesome. I'm sold. Let's go work out and watch some King's Raid. And you can start playing now by using the link in the description below. Thank you to King's Raid for sponsoring this video. This video will contain spoilers for Jujutsu Kaisen up to the most recent arc in the manga, so if you aren't caught up and care about spoilers, please stop here. Kento Nanami is a grade 1 Jujutsu sorcerer who quit his everyday job and returned to the Jujutsu Academy to work with them on their missions to eradicate and eliminate rogue curses. Though the reason that he originally left the Academy in the first place was because he ultimately hated the lessons that they taught to their students when it came to accepting that they must throw away their lives, because he felt that every person's life was precious in their own right, from the wealthy businessmen to the humble bakers. Though before we discuss this too deeply, let's first understand the meaning behind his name and design. The name Kento Nanami is a name that fits his role rather well, as when we break it down, we see a couple meanings buried within it. Starting first with his given name, Kento, as when you examine the characters that make up the name, you get Building Man, or Man Who Belongs in a Building. Which makes sense, given that Nanami walked away from his life as a Jujutsu Sorcerer in search of an easier everyday life and became a salaryman. Even his design reflects this Building Man aesthetic, with him wearing a business suit and tie everywhere he goes, only removing them when he's off the clock. Even taking his tie off specifically, which is a signifier that the workday is over. He also wears a special pair of armless glasses, which assumedly work in a very similar vein to a monocle. Though the reason that he chooses to wear these glasses is actually due to the fact that when he works as a Jujutsu Sorcerer, a common practice within that profession is to obscure your own eyes, so that you can secretly monitor an area for curses, since curses tend to act a bit more aggressive and unpredictable when they know they're being watched. And if I had to guess, I would say that his glasses seem to be somewhat of a reference to Alucard's glasses from Hell given the similar shape and design, just these ones are armless compared to Alucard's which aren't. On top of that, the name Building Man could also apply to his physical build as well, as during the Shibuya incident, he is attacked by a curse user named Haruta, who compares kicking him to kicking a stone wall. With that understood, I think it's fair to say that Nanami is built like a brick shithouse. Along with all that, his given name Kento altogether means the cure for depression or rise of happiness, which works very well with Nanami as his desire to return 
return to being a jujitsu sorcerer was caused by him seeing the impact of his inactivity, with some curses running rampant and causing issues for people who he could be helping. Along with this, given how curses feed off negative energy and can cause those negative emotions to occur, Nanami's disposing and exercising of these spirits is his name taking a literal form, as he can quite literally raise the global happiness or cure depression when he fights off these curses. And then you have his family name, Nanamine, which means seven seas, and could refer to Nanamine's plan to find a place to rest after he retires, as he was looking all around the world for a peaceful and cheap place. But on top of that, the character Seven in his name is one of the two influences over his Jujutsu Sorcerer title, that being the Seven Three Sorcerer, with the other thing being his natural curse ability, known as the Ratio Technique or the Ten Stroke Technique. How the Ratio Technique works is Nanami can mentally divide his targets with a ten line grid, forcing a weak spot to appear at the seven to three ratio point of that grid, that when struck causes massive damage to that area, much like a video game boss's weak point. And in most cases, these weak points make things so easy to cut that he can sever through them with the dullest of blades, so much so that Nanami can even just swat them with his hands to destroy them if they're weak enough. Though the ratio technique isn't limited to a single 10 point grid, as Nanami can divide his target in multiple places at one time, allowing him to easily sever arms, legs, body, even the head of a curse all at once. And this ability isn't tied just to living things, as he can use it on non-living things as well, and it's how he created one of his special attacks in the form of Ratio Technique, Collapse. Now, Collapse is an attack where Nanami focuses a ton of his curse energy into attacking a structure or building and causing massive damage to cave it in or collapse it, which creates a ton of debris that can crush his opponent, especially when he follows up this attack with a regular ratio attack that is designed to cripple his target. Though to use Collapse effectively, Nanami must first fulfill one of his binding vows. One that he likes to do is showing his hand, which is where you explain your technique so that you can release a large amount of curse energy. But this is a more common binding vow among Jujutsu sorcerers, and isn't one of his own design. Along with that, it's not his only vow, as Nanami has also taken on another vow. This one is fully one of his own creation, that being Overtime. How the Overtime vow works is Nanami will limit the amount of curse energy he can use while working on the clock for the school, which is roughly around 8 hours a day, from either 8am to 5pm or 9am to 6pm, given which 8 hour time slot he decides to base his work hours around. Though once Nanami goes beyond his work hours, he enters into overtime, and with that, his curse energy spikes, and to commonly show that he is in overtime, he undoes his tie and wraps it around his knuckles as well. And when working overtime, Nanami's curse energy becomes overwhelming, as in a sense, he's allowing himself to use his full power now. Along with this, he can stack this boost with the showing one's hand vows boost to make extremely powerful ratio attacks, assumedly around the level of collapse, come out in rapid succession, which has allowed him to not only gain the title of Grade 1 Jujutsu Sorcerer, but he also now holds the record for the most consecutive uses of Black Flash, an extremely powerful special attack that amplifies one's ability even more. But to trigger it, you must release an absurd amount of curse energy in one one millionth of a second before your attack connects. Which does make it extremely difficult to pull off, but given that his natural curse ability, the Ratio Technique, already requires a ton of focus, he seems to almost be built perfectly to master the Black Flash himself, which has allowed him to gain a record of four consecutive uses of Black Flash in a row. But he doesn't consider it anything to celebrate. As he says, once you learn to use Black Flash once, it becomes simpler to use it multiple times. Even so, he chalks up his record as more of luck than skill. Though speaking of the ratio technique, the ability itself seems to be somewhat based off the golden ratio, sometimes even referred to as the golden cut which is a geometric ratio that is considered to be both aesthetically pleasing and extremely fascinating, as you can study and analyze it in many forms, be it art or nature, as it seems to be hard-coded into everything's DNA, which is likely why Nanami is able to so easily visualize it when fighting and turn the divide or foundation of one's own ratio into a physical weakness that he can strike and cause it to collapse. Funny enough, the golden ratio is also ingrained into our own worldviews as well, and can work for even non-physical structures such as the man-made system known as the financial market, which is the job field that Nanami would enter after he left the Jujutsu school system. Though why did Nanami leave? Well, it's because of the extreme frustration he felt with both the incompetence of the higher-ups of the school system, but the teachings of the Jujutsu Academy as well, and how they seem to push sorcerers into sacrificing them 
themselves for their cause, with him experiencing the losses that this system causes firsthand when his partner, Yu Hiabara, an extremely energetic and positive individual with an optimistic view on the world, died due to the improper labeling of a Grade 1 curse as a Grade 2. What made it even worse is how his death was somewhat brushed off by the other working Jujutsu sorcerers, causing Nanami to view sorcerers in a bad light. As to him, all human life was precious, and it was disgusting how they could move on day to day, even though they got one of their own killed. It's also likely that these views on people as a whole is likely a trait that the normally pessimistic Nanami inherited from his late friend Yu. And it seems like these teachings stuck with him even later in his sorcerer career, as he gets extremely upset or furious when he sees his friends or innocent people in harm's way. Though before he would take on the role as a first grade Jujutsu sorcerer, he would end up leaving the field of sorcery altogether, beginning his financial management job where he'd help manage the money of his clients using his natural understanding of risks and balances due to his natural curse ability. He would begin to approach finances from the position of trying to ensure that his customers are as successful as he was, equating caring for their money as caring for their lives, and he'd try to pass these teachings down to the new generation as well. Though, even in a normal job, surrounded by a normal life, he still found incompetence all over the place, the same incompetence that drove him away from Jujutsu sorcery. Along with this, in his day-to-day, -day, because of his sixth sense, he'd find himself noticing small curses all around the place, bothering the everyday man with their negative energy. But he would ignore these factors and hope to pursue a comfy and peaceful life. Though, the more he ignored these, the more he felt like he was abstaining from helping those in need, until he noticed a small curse targeting a completely innocent baker, causing them unnecessary issues in life. And while not life-threatening, he couldn't help but act, swatting the fly head curse and killing it in a single hit, creating an instant relief for the baker, and ultimately, in this decision, Nanami had also decided that he would seek out a job at the Jujutsu Academy, as he in a way found a new meaning to life. He would do what he could to help others in a way that only he could, because when it comes to Jujutsu sorcery, it wasn't about always killing the biggest curses. It's more about dealing with those everyday problems only you can take care of. And from here, he would go on to be assigned as a teacher for Yuji, ultimately utilizing his teaching methods that he acquired from working at his financial company and trying to lead Yuji down the right path. Gojo seemingly picked him specifically for the reason that the two would bond rather quickly, as Nanami not only considered Yuji to not be a sorcerer fully yet, in treating him somewhat like a rookie employer or trainee, but also Nanami seemed quite attached to Yuji as well, as he reminded him a lot of his former partner Yu. So much so that I believe that's actually the naming theme behind Yu as a character, and together these two would investigate the special grade curse known as Mahito, and Nanami and Mahito actually have somewhat of a strong rivalry starting from their first meeting, where Mahito would ultimately lose out to the ratio collapse technique, but recover due to his regeneration factor. Then he would get the better hand of Nanami in their second fight, as Nanami overwhelms Mahito and forces him into a corner that awakens his domain expansion, which, if not for Yuji's assistance, would have resulted in Nanami's death, so they are both one one for one on each other, but unfortunately for Nanamine, in their final battle, Mahito would catch him on his last legs, half alive and weakened after being surprise attacked by two extremely powerful curses in a row. With victory in Mahito's hands, Nanami gets a vision of Yu once again. Asking him why he returned to his job, Yu then points off into the distance where Yuji is just arriving. Nanami realizes that he found his purpose nonetheless, and it was to help people grow for the better, be it the employees he trained to respect their customers money, the baker he cured of a curse, or Yuji, who he helped mold into a sorcerer who would be able to save anyone in danger. And with his final words, he respects Yuji's own ability, telling him that he has Mahito from here, before his entire upper body is ruptured, killing him. Kento Nanami is one of the best handled characters in the entirety of Jujutsu Kaisen, showing us that even someone who starts from humble beginnings like Nanami, as it's confirmed from the author that his family had no previous experience with Jujutsu sorcery in any way, yet he was still able to achieve such a high ranking position. Ultimately, Nanami left a huge impact on me when reading the series. I love his personal journey and seeing and seeing portions of his story unfold right up until his tragic end was special in a way, and I recommend everyone check him out. He is without a doubt one of my own personal favorite characters of all time. And with that all said and done, if you enjoyed this video and want to see more videos like it in the future, I have a Patreon at patreon.com slash medinotthebadguy. Patreon is a very helpful tool and helps keep this channel flowing in a very natural way. And if you want to find a golden ratio of your own, well, you can find a lot of beauty within Shimonetta, a boring word where the concept of dirty jokes doesn't exist at buyshimonetta.com.